online with us. My name is Trevor Backoffner. I'm the Students and Families Pastor at First Christian Church of Napa, and we are going to have a great time together today. It's the last day to help out with the furniture drive we've been doing for Napa's Salvation Army Culinary Student Housing. If this is the first time that you're hearing about it, don't worry, there's still time to help out. The Salvation Army is a new modular building that they're gonna use to house six of the new Napa Valley Culinary Training Academy students. And it's not quite furnished yet. And the students are arriving on the 20th. So if you wanna help, please go to fccnapa.org slash chef's home and purchase an item small or large on the Salvation Army's Amazon list. This is such an important thing that they're doing and they help out the community so much. So we'd love to have your help on this. But remember, today is the last day uh, to order to get them their stuff in time. Now, there's no question here, this is gonna be a different kind of summer for any family with kids and students in the home. So why not celebrate with us with a Families at First Wacky Summer? We have a kit that we'll be sending out to families with three months of fun, starting with Father's Day and a way for you to celebrate the dads and dudes in your life that you'd like to honor. The kit will include two family competitions where you can compete against other FCC families, along with lots of wacky summer holiday social media posts and other surprises. So if you have kids or students in the home, watch your mailbox for the Families at First Wacky Summer Kit coming soon and get ready for all the fun. As we pause for our offering moment today, we'd just like to thank you for giving of yourselves and of your treasure. Thank you for your generous gifts that allow us to continue to serve both our community and the world. Today, we invite you to give online by going to fccnapa.org, using the FCC app, or by texting the amount you'd like to give to 84321. If you do prefer to pay by check, you can send those to the church office. If you're new to First Christian Church and our online service, we would love to connect with you. In fact, we actually have a welcome gift for you. We want to send you a gift card to our favorite neighborhood coffee shop. Simply text the word WELCOME to 1-707-414-0949. Prayer is powerful. Often we think of it as the last resort when it should be one of the first things that we do. We would love to join you as you pray. Share your requests by going to prayer at fccnapa.org or by using the FCC Church app. Now, let's worship with the FCC worship team.
Let's make that our prayer. I'm set on you, and you meet me here today, mercies that are new, all my fears and doubts, they can all come to, because they can't stay long, when I'm here with you, it's a new horizon, and I'm set on you, and you meet me here today. Fears and doubts, they can all come to because they can't stay long when I'm here with you. It's a new horizon, and I'm set on you. And you meet me here today with mercies that are new. All my fears and doubts, they can all come to.
new horizon and I'm set on you and you meet me here today with mercy standing new all my fears and doubts they can all come to because they can't stay long when I believe you are the way the truth, the life, I believe you are the way, the truth, the life, I believe you FCC, thank you for tuning in with us today at home. Thank you for being here. We are gathered with some of our leaders praying and uh, helping us prepare as we move forward to gathering as the church uh, with social distancing culture. <laughs> oh man, how is this different than anything you've ever experienced before? I just want to say thank you, first and foremost, to all of you who participated in our survey. Show of hands, how many participated in the survey? Awesome, thank you. Of almost 500 surveys that went out, we had like 200 come back. We're super excited because that helped us understand where you were in light of this whole uh, shelter at home experience and what's taking place. And so uh, it reminded me of a couple of things. First and foremost, it reminded me of thank you for participating in the survey. Shout out to Bethany who received the prize for uh, participating in that survey. You, may you be blessed in uh, using that. But it reminded me of this new little toy I got, right? So I've been sheltering at home, and it's caused me to uh, be on Amazon a little bit. Anybody else? I'm going to start a group for that. But everyone recognizes this traffic light, right? Some of us uh, are not used to driving, and we thought, what is that thing flashing in front of me? It's a traffic light. And what it reminded me of is Romans chapter 12, verse 10. It says, let us honor one another above ourselves. Let us honor one another above ourselves. So here's what it got me thinking about. You think, how are those two things even connected, right? Here's what it got me thinking about. First, it got me thinking about there are some of us today that as we look at the surroundings, that we are red light people, right? Most of you not here are red light people. Uh, red light is really concerned, have a high level of anxiousness and feelings about what's taking place and what's happening. And so you're like, I'm going to wait until it's really safe to come back. That's great. That's great. Some of you are green light people, right? Green light, you're here and you're ready to go. You're emailing me. Hey, how come we haven't opened, you know, already? What's going on? What's happening? And some of you are yellow light. Anybody yellow light? Yellow light means what? Go faster. Okay, no, that's not what it means. Uh, <clears throat> yellow light means, hey, I, I'm ready, I want to, I want to see people, I want to connect, but I'm a little cautious, have a little bit of concern, have some questions about what that means, about physically gathering together as a church. And so your surveys helped us to continue to form and get an idea of how do we create space that's safe for everyone, whether you're red, yellow, or green, uh, what, uh, uh, and that it's uh, conducive to worshiping the Lord together and honoring one another above ourselves. And so what I thought about this is that FCC is not a red light church. It's not a green light church. It's not even yellow light. FCC is all of those colors. There are many of you that I've talked to, uh, that I've had conversation with, who are, you're just in that red zone. And that's great. I bless you. Some of you are in that green zone. I, I just honor you. I bless you. And those decisions. We have medical professionals in our community who are in the red light, in the green light. We have uh, medical information and scientific information that's red, yellow, it's green. The issue is not about this is my color, it's me understanding your color. It's me understanding here's where I'm at so that I can live out Romans chapter 12, verse 10, that I can honor you above myself. That I can honor you and bless you 
and respect you. And so as FCC continues to look for opportunities to gather together in larger and larger groups, again, uh, several of us here today, next week we'll have a few more, and then on the 28th, we'll open for our public service. We want to be a community that's honoring, that's blessing, that's encouraging, that's giving a respect to one another above ourselves and our own opinions and our own ideas and it's a place of grace. And so I just want to invite you into that with me. I thought this was a great visual for me and what is essential for us as a church. And so let's just pray that right now. Father in heaven, may we continue to be a community of grace, a community that blesses one another, a community that honors one another, a community that is for one another, a community that is living in your grace so that everyone can experience your love. Father, we pray this. We pray that this would be deep within our hearts, our minds, our spirits. We pray that this would be an essential truth within the life and the family of First Christian Church. And we pray this in the powerful name of Jesus. And God's people said, amen, amen, amen. Well, we started a series last week called Essential. And that illustration, that visual illustration for us as a traffic light is, I think, a great reminder of how we honor each other, how we prefer one another, how we respect, how we bless, how we live out the one another's. And it's essential in our life. And I talked about that a little bit last week. We move forward in faith with a, what, devotion, first and foremost, to Jesus. We want to be devoted in our lives to him, to his calling, to his purpose in our lives. And as we do that, it allows us to then be devoted to one another. That's what Romans 12, 10 also says that, right? Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. And so we want to be devoted to Jesus so that we can truly be devoted to one another, right? Without Jesus, it's difficult to be devoted to one another for the main reason is we do it in our own strength. And all of us get weary and tired trying to live out of our own strength. And so we need that work of Jesus in our lives to love one another. And as we love one another, that allows us to love others, others who are different than us, others who think different than we do, uh, others who are far from our belief system. But we want to be a place in a community that is loving one another. It's an attitude that's serving one another. And all that gets wrapped up into what we define as our purpose and a statement about our purpose, the kind of why behind the what. And the purpose is that we are a people who are living in God's grace, just in everyday ways. God's grace, that gift of grace, that grace that saved us, that grace that is transforming us, that grace that is filling us day by day. We're living in that place of grace so that everyone can experience God's love. So that everyone can experience God's love, and that's what we're about and what we're doing. So I want to take us back to the way back, right? Back to when the church started. Not this church, per se, 160 years ago, but back to the start of the early church. So you brought your Bibles. This group right here, I know, is dived in. They got their Bibles at home. You grab your Bible, and we're going to look at the book of Acts, Acts chapter 6. And I'm going to dive in there today, and I'm going to take this today and lead off with a thought. I'm going to follow it up on Tuesday with my email thought. To the book, uh, how we continue to unpack this, and then later in the week with a social media post. And I hope you'll dive in and see what's going on here. How we live in a place of grace. It's essential for First Christian Church. Now, Acts chapter 6, here's a little context, here's the setting. This is post Jesus' ministry on earth, right? This is post his death on the cross, his burial, his resurrection, those things that bring us into a relationship back with God the Father, back with Christ and through the Spirit. These things that bridge that gap for us. This is post those 40 days after the resurrection where Jesus taught and equipped his disciples. He gave them this great commission of how they would live out their lives. Uh, this is post Jesus' instruction after his ascension to wait in Jerusalem for Pentecost. Acts chapter 2 where the Holy Spirit would come to fill them with power and might to continue to carry forth the mission of love into Jerusalem, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. It's post all these things. The church is doing that. The people of God are following because they are d daily devoted to the ways of Jesus and to follow Jesus and to be led by the Spirit. Uh, they're, uh, they're seeing the kingdom expand. Uh, uh, they're seeing the gates of hell be shaken because they are leading with love. 
and captives are being set free. So how does that happen? Maybe how does that even happen today in our lives? Here's an essential truth. When a group of followers of Jesus, when a group of followers choose to follow Jesus in a regular, everyday, devotional way, devoted to you, Lord, they begin to see the community around them radically changed. As I live in the grace of God, others begin to experience the love of God. See that track with me, right? They weren't perfect at all, and neither are we. But here's an operating principle, a belief statement for FCC, is that all of us want to be people who are following Jesus and leading in love. Following Jesus and leading in love, right? We are leaders and followers. We are followers and leaders. We are followers, leaders, leaders, followers. Say it with me. It's like ABC. Leaders and followers. We, we just, it's natural. It's who we are. It's what we're about. All of us. Now, often I'll have a conversation with somebody and they'll say, you know what? I'm just not a leader. I'm not a leader. Which we'll talk and have some conversation. Yeah, because I get that. I understand what you're saying. But the first person you lead is yourself. So yeah, you are leading yourself. And we want to be a people that are not just leading ourselves, but helping to lead others to find Jesus, to follow Jesus. And so what I want to ask today, are you leading and are you following? Are you, or how is your followership, how is your leadership playing out? See, as part of the FCC home, this is essential. The 630 plus of us uh, here in this household of faith, various ages, various stages of faith, all of us recognizing that I follow and I lead. It's an, it's an essential part of being a, a part of this community. It's essential in our devotion to Jesus, and it's essential in our devotion to one another and loving and honoring one another. It, we might say <clears throat> that it's an intentional path that we're on. The biblical word is discipleship, that we have a discipling intentionality about our lives, and that as we're growing, as we're uh, uh, of being an apprentice to Jesus, more of him in our lives is changing us. So let's dig in. What do we see from leaders? So if we're all leaders, we're all followers, what do we see? Well, we see this idea that we teach, we pray. We teach, we pray. And this is how it happened in Acts chapter 6, right? Acts chapter 6, all of a sudden, there's a lot of teaching and prayer going on, and the church is exploding in growth, and they have a problem. A family problem occurs, and they have more widows uh, coming to the church, and in that day and age, if you were a widow, you were a high vulnerability person. Uh, if you didn't have a father, you didn't have a husband, you didn't have sons who were able to provide for you, you were in a desperate, vulnerable place. And that begins to happen, and the church is reaching out, and they're welcoming, they're bringing these uh, widows in, and they're like, how do we help? How do we create a system? And so we see this, uh, this family problem. Verse 1, we read this, Acts chapter 6. During those days, the number of Jesus' followers kept multiplying greatly, right? There was this way of love that was taking place. But a complaint was brought against those who spoke Aramaic by the Greek-speaking Jews, Jews, the Greek-speaking Jews. So what happens is we got a relational tension going on, right? There's this friction in relationship. The, the Greek-speaking Jews felt that their widows were being overlooked during the daily distribution of food. So we also have this benevolence ministry taking place, right? Helping people and honoring one another. We have a great benevolence ministry here. We're helping people in our community. We're, we're blessing them who find themselves in particular financial problems. And how do we help you and make those things happen? And people are giving to that. So this is what's going on. The reason we do that is we see it from the early church. So verse 2, the apostles do something. The apostles called a meeting of all the believers and told them, it's not advantageous for us to be pulled away from the word of God to wait on tables. Now, I always like to pause here for a minute uh, when I read that and think, okay, what's happening here? What's going on? Right? Uh, all of a sudden, leadership has gone to their head, right? Jesus is out of the picture. Right? He was normally correcting them and teaching them. And like, hey, 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 wait, that's kind of below me to serve tables. I, I did my service, right? I helped feed those 10,000 people. I, I helped feed the multitudes with Jesus. Is that what's going on? Well, here th they go a little further. It's not an arrogance that this is kind of below them. What they're saying is, at this particular point in time, I have a leadership responsibility. You have a leadership responsibility. We have a leadership responsibility. And here's what it is, verse 3. Brothers and sisters... 
choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the Spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them. It's an important responsibility. Caring for one another, benevolence is, is important to our community. And caring and providing and uh, honoring one another, it's important. But we're going to turn this over to them. And we will give our attention to what? Prayer and ministry of the word. Prayer and teaching the word. Prayer and equipping the body of believers. Now, this is a common thread throughout the scripture. Uh, in fact, we see it all the way back to Exodus 18 with Moses, right? Moses has brought the children of Israel, uh, Israel out of Egypt's control, and they're moving through and stumbling through new life, uh, and he starts to try to do everything himself. And his father-in-law shows up and says, we've got a problem. You've got a problem. Uh, you are trying to do it all on your own. You need to create a new system here. And so he takes his counsel from his father-in-law by helping divide people up into groups and help them to minister to one another and to the regular needs so that he doesn't burn out. So this kind of thread goes through. It, it's in the New Testament. It's in Romans. It's in Corinthians. It's in Ephesians. We continue to see this idea of we lead and we follow. And they're saying at this particular point in time, our primary assignment is to pray Seek what God has for us in this new territory, in this new way of living. And communicate the word of God to one another. Now, let me say this. Um, <clears throat> contrary to popular belief, I do work more than one day a week. I know. In fact, this was great. As soon as we went down in shelter mode, I had my very dear friends text me going, must be nice. Your one day a week is now no days a week. I said, yes, I know where you live. Um, and so... <laughs> Uh, I, the truth is, is that all of us have assignments. Now, as I said last week, you and I have the same primary assignment. Is we come together, we praise the Lord, we pray together, we do that in large settings, we do that in small settings. And that's first and foremost. But then each of us has assignments, leadership assignments from the Lord. And how we live those out. So for me, Probably 50% of my week really is about prayer, ministry of the word. What that mean is like I'm praying, I'm asking God for his direction, how he's leading not just me, my family, but how is he leading us as a family of God. Uh, leaning into that with others to pray. Understanding the scriptures, reading the scriptures, studying the scriptures, thinking about the scriptures and what that means. So I spend a half, half my week doing that, just wondering and how God is leading us and how God is challenging us. Then the other half of the week, a number of things like meetings with uh, leaders and staff, um, uh, counseling and coaching sessions, and stewardship of the resources that are coming in, the property and what we do with that, and how are we wise about that? How does it impact the kingdom? How can we expand kingdom things and weddings and events and funerals? And on and on it goes. But I have to always come back for myself on a regular basis and say that a central primary responsibility that I have to pray and minister into the word, be a ministry of the word. How do I pray and teach? How do I pray and equip? How do I live out that primary assignment at this particular season of my life? And here's the thing. You and I lead and follow. You and I have assignments. Do you know your assignment? What is the assignment of God over your life today? Now, I just kind of explained real quickly mine, but think about this in Ephesians chapter 4. Let's str uh, stretch this out. Ephesians chapter 4 talks about the uh, being essential assignment for each and every one of us. In fact, refers to this for the church to understand that Jesus gifts his church with some wonderful gifts. Uh, write this down or flip over to Ephesians chapter 4 because I think for FCC it's very essential in our purpose and our identity to, to understand our assignments. What is that primary assignment? Ephesians 4 verse 11 says this. Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church. And what were those gifts? Well, this is great. They were people. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastor, teachers. Uh, apostles who were kind of leading out, uh, leading the way. And, and prophets who were speaking and declaring the truths of God. Evangelists who were helping one another understand what it means to know Jesus and how great the grace of God is, and pastors who provide care and shepherding and, and compassion, and teachers who expound and help us to understand the truths of God in a deeper way. These people, by 
uh, and also, side note, are not just staff of a church. Well, they're the body of Christ having a responsibility. That's what verse 12, their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. Do his work in building up the body of Christ. I think often uh, we can get focused that it's, it's paid professional staff who are the ones assigned to do the work of ministry. And that's very common today. And I think it's critical for, and essential for FCC to recognize that the role of staff, or maybe even better said, the role of leaders, is to equip one another to fulfill God's assignments individually and corporately as a church, as a body of of, uh, of God, as the, as the body of Christ. Verse 13, this continues, right? It continues from Acts chapter 6. It continues from Ephesians chapter 4. It continues to this point today that, that we all come to a unity in our faith and the knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Now, I could just spend quite a bit of time continuing to unpack that, but what does that mean for you and I today? We lead and we follow. We follow and we lead. We lead, we follow, and if you're part of a local church, if you're part of this local church, and you're hearing this for the first time, you're saying, okay, what's my role? How do I lead? How do I follow? What are those giftings in my life? If you've been around for a little while and you're like, okay, I've never heard this. I don't know what my gifting is. Then as a leader, I need to apologize. Maybe I need to repent and say, we have let you down. We have failed you because this is fundamental. This is like essential for every local congregation that follows Christ. Knowing my gifting. Uh, knowing how God has uh, put these unique gifts into my being, into my heart, so that I can continue to fulfill what God's call in my life is. All of us have an assignment. Do you know what it is? Do you know what it is? In fact, right now, you can post uh, online that this is my assignment. This is what God is doing in my life right now. Maybe you don't. That's okay. Make note. That's where you begin. If you don't know, today's Homework assignment is to start asking, inquiring, seeking God, seeking the counsel of the church. Oh, how is God wired me? What's my assignment? If you do know it, then my second question is, is it activated? All right, are you living in it? Are you walking in it? Are you leading? How's your leadership going today? Are you leading out with the giftings of God in your life? Or maybe this is the one I had to come to some hard truths with this week. Anybody, right? You can put your hand at home. That's fine. Am I distracted? Yeah? One honest person in the room. So next week, we're going to get some more, right? Yeah, we're distracted. You and I won't know what to say no to until we know what to say yes to. You don't know what to say no to until you know what to say yes to. And what you say yes to are those primary assignments from the Lord, the primary calling of God in your life, and how he's made you unique, how he's designed you in the way you think. And this is not just your skills and things that you've learned over time. This is a supernatural component. This is what the Bible talks about with respect to spiritual gifting. Have you discerned those gifts? Yes, I have. No, I haven't. Are those gifts operational in my life? Well, um, I know, I don't know. This is where we come together as the body of Christ, and we minister to one another. Now, I don't know about you, uh, but for me, I am constantly training myself to say no to some things. Does anybody do that? Uh, No? This means yes, yeah. No? Yeah, I do that. Uh, In fact, this weekend, I was convicted by it, right? Lots of things that can be distracting. Netflix. Did it just get real for anybody? Wow, Netflix or uh, the news feed, whatever it might be. There's these things that I have to train myself, rethink myself to say no to. And those are a couple of them. There's other things. Uh, And the reason I do that is because I want to be able to say yes to some God opportunities. 
things that God wants to bring into my life that are related to my primary assignment. And why is this so important for us as a community of faith? Because this is the where we are maturing as a group, as we're finding unity together, as we're living out God's assignments, not just individually, but collectively as a group, as a community of faith, a household of faith. Our roles and our responsibilities to honor one another, to love one another, to respect one another, to help one another be challenged into God's assignments. This is leading, and this is following. And God calls us each into that, to be a leader, to be a follower. It's essential for FCC. So for the 650 of us, right, the handful of us here in the room together, uh, those of us who are at home who are watching live or watching this on demand, that we understand this is how God has gifted me. This is how I work in this season of my life to honor God, to fulfill his call in my life, and how I do that collectively as a body of believers, as a local congregation, the assignments of living in grace so that others can experience love. This was essential for Acts chapter 6. This is what we see starting to take place. This is what we see as the early church grew and matured. This is what we see today in the church today, advancing the mission so that the gates of hell begin to rattle, that the gates of hell begin to break down, that the gates of hell crash down in homes all over our community, that the gates of hell crash down because the advancement of God in our city, in our nation. And that begins, friends, with you and I following the Spirit of the Lord and leading out in love in our own hearts, in our own minds. That's my desire, that's my prayer for each of every one of us, is to see that take place, to hear the gates of hell rattling. I mean, if you listen today, you might see that, you might hear that, that rattling, where his church is rising up in love to express love and grace for our neighbors. In fact, I'm going to invite you to pray with me into that, because it's not just for me, it's not just for us, it's for our community, a love here. So Father in heaven, I thank you. I thank you for the love that has been poured out through Jesus. I thank you for the hope that we have in Christ. I thank you, Jesus, for bringing us to this place today, to be gathered here physically, to be gathered uh, across this community, seeking to live in the grace of of salvation, in the grace of your power, your gifting within us. So right now, Father, I pray for each and every one of us here live, uh, watching, those in the room, those watching on demand, as we hear this message, that you would ignite within us an understanding, a purpose, an assignment. In Jesus' name. of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Your hope.
of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Amen, amen. Jesus is a firm foundation that we can build our life upon. And I am so thankful, so grateful to be part of a household of faith that is intentionally being devoted to Jesus and intentionally turning to love and to honor one another. Now, may it be true of us as we lead out from here today, as we lead out in our work, in our businesses, uh, in our schools, in our community, that we would lead with love. 
that we would lead with love because we are a people who are living in God's grace. And we get it. We recognize it. So may he bless you with his grace to overflow through you. May love be your Thank you. Thank you for being here. Amen. Thanks for tuning in today. We want to remind you that every weekend, Kids at First and Students at First activities are being posted at fccnapa.org. Jan Hansen and I have put together resources to help your kids have the same great experiences they're accustomed to on campus, but at home with you. Visit the church website today, and you'll find links to resources for you and your kids to participate in together. Thanks for joining us today for Church Online. And thanks for joining us live. All right. <laughs> so let me just say uh, a couple things. Uh, my lovely assistants.